eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Theodore Roosevelt's recipe for success has real resonance for Australia tonight as they see a glittering prize twinkling on the horizon. They are ready, they are prepared, they're willing, they're determined to end 31 years of pain. The only question remains is whether they're good enough. In 90 minutes or perhaps a little longer, we shall know. Well, Husserink has gone for a team that has goals in mind this evening. Tim Cahill and Marco Bresciano start. Harry Kuehl and Archie Thompson are the men to drop out. It's reasonably the same 3-4-3 shape that Hiddink started with on Saturday. Tim Cahill playing at the head of the diamond. Vinny Grella at the base, no doubt to keep an eye on the danger man, Rekoba. Emerton and Chipperfield will be expected to get forward and get some balls into the box for the likes of Cahill and captain Mark Baduka. Kuehl and Aloisi may be used, among others, off the bench. Craig Foster, is that the team that uh, you would have picked if you were who's hitting? I think so. The only surprise, as we said, uh, as Les said in the lead-up to this match, was maybe Harry Kuehl, whether that was a tactical switch or depended on his physical condition. To have 90 minutes, he hasn't done that for oh so long. We always knew Marco Bresciano was going to come in, and Timmy Cahill is another genuine match winner. Those two players, reasonably fresh, both of them, are going to be key. As for the Uruguayan lineup, well, they've come with a slightly more circumspect approach, as you might expect on such a big event. In fact, it looks like they're pretty well matched up man for man with Australia. Guillermo Rodriguez and the returning Diego Lugano form a back three with Paolo Montero, the captain. Gustavo Varela also returns after his ban. He and Mario Reguero providing the width, along with Diogo and Dario Rodriguez. Recoba, we think, will support Richard Morales up front. That side showing four changes from the first leg. Diego Perez in midfield was uh, suffering with a muscular problem, possibly something to do with their long flight, which uh, most of them, Craig, had to fly economy. You know, back in 1974, Australia beat Uruguay 2-0 in Sydney en route to a World Cup in Germany. Could the same thing happen again tonight? We're about to find out. Cross your fingers, your toes, have your worry beats the hand. This is going to be a heck of a ride. Australia ch are chasing the tie. 1-0 down after the first leg in Montevideo. And they're kicking from right to left on your screen in this first half. And it's bound to be an edgy, nervy opening start. All teams try and settle down in front of this huge crowd at Telstra Stadium. Albano Rakoba said this week that Uruguay had a divine right to be at the World Cup Finals. Well, they're going to have to earn it this evening. And just a few of the banners have picked up on that uh, statement in the crowd in Sydney. Divine right said one, not tonight. That's Guillermo Rodriguez, one of two Rodriguez's on the park tonight. And the first free kick has gone Uruguay's way. Richard Morales, always a handful for Lucas Neal. Nice early signs, though, for Australia defensively. Trying to make sure they put pressure on the first touch of the Uruguayans coming from behind, keep them going away from goal, as they did on that occasion. And the to deliver. Oh, and it bounced off Mark Schwarzer. And an early scare for Australia. He is the danger from any sort of range. We saw that on Saturday nights in Montevideo. We do receive the ball, we need to attack with players, get numbers forward. I'm sure the likes of Everton and Chipperfield have been given licence to get forward, and that's good work by Mark Baduca. Has Cale and Bresciano in support. Slips it to Cahill, flag was up far side. Hey. Now Varela has slipped his marker. Rather quickly there. Australian fans weren't happy with that decision. A few complaints by Chipperfield. That's a lovely skill, really. This is danger signs. Exact same situation from the first leg. It's almost the same spot. It's Rakoba to deliver. Schwarzer would have known too much about that one. It's been deflected behind. Another Uruguayan corner. Lots of movement, oh, and Schwarzer didn't get there. And it was Diego Logano, I think, who got the head roll, maybe even came off his shoulder. Flag had gone up in any case. Well, again, the ball was nothing short of world-class. 
He puts so much pace on it. Spin, hits it flat straight across the defenders. It's almost impossible for a keeper to come out. Australia just need to settle down a bit here. It's a good ball. Popovic had stayed up for the corner. A oh, shot from long range from Tony Midler. Forcing the save out of Karina. He doesn't score often, and when he does, they're important goals. And with the ball set up for him, it's strike on target. It's Tony Popovic. Very hard with his fitness over the last few weeks with Les Gillis and Anthony Korea. Although he's not been playing regularly for Crystal Palace through his various injury problems. Well, as well, might have been out. Duca just leaning off. Here's a chance for Everton. Kalina! Beaten away by Fabio Carini. Still in play? Still. Corner ball. That is good football. Good football, Tony Vidmar. Ball from the back to front, right into the feet of Mark Paduka. Oh, he loves it. Good opportunity for him. And his favoured right boot just outside the box. Plenty of those in the Dutch first division. But good play at the back, I like it. We're under pressure, out wide. Popovic turned back, went back to the keeper. Switched the play. Now Rakoba. Oh, he's nicked the ball away from Vidmar. It's Rakoba! Oh. Could have scored and possibly should have scored and maybe put the tie beyond Australia's reach and Rakoba knows it. Australia have got out of jail there, Craig. Yeah. Well, we need some luck. We always need luck in these big games. I'll tell you what, we haven't had a tremendous amount in the last seven campaigns. Maybe we're due. Maybe that's a sign for Australia. I'll tell you what, on his left boot there, Rakoba, he's asked to hit the target. Ooh, and that was uh, an arm across the face by Tony Popovic, and Popovic is going to get a yellow card for that. Clearly impeded the progress of Rakova. And he gets an open play on the counter-attack too. And he's such a threat. That's Vinny Grilla. He's under pressure, good ball for Bresciano. That's into Kalina. Started beautifully, Kalina. Yeah, Grilla. They just run away from him for a moment. Viduka finding Emerton. Got Emerton with the shot. Bresciano pulled off into space out wider. Low percentage shot from Emerton. It looks very much uh, as though Australia are going to make an early substitute. Here you have it, Tony Popovich making way. It's a tactical switch, taking off one of the central defenders. An attacking player. Whether he'll go to a back four with Rakova dropping in deep, they don't need the central three looking after them. Chipperfield comes in. Kuehl looks to go to the left. Keep an eye on that. He didn't need that extra defender. There's one of those defenders, Lucas Neal. Good adjustment by hitting. That's what he's here for. There's a few coaches that read a game as well as Hugh Siddick. Here is Kuehl. His first touch, Chipperfield. Finding Cahill. Look how tight Good the run. space is. Here's Harry Kuehl. Oh, it's still hit. And it's, it's in! Still there. Australia have scored! Marco Bresciano! 33 minutes played, and Telstra Stadium erupts. Australia are level. What a moment! And Harry Kuehl's involvement and impact is immediate. And it was brilliant. It's a brilliant tactical switch by Hiddink. Give the man some credit. 25 years coaching at the highest level. Read the game. Read the weakness. Read what Australia needed. Needed number 10, H. Kuehl. Great introduction from Kuehl. Beautiful combination play. Getting numbers there. Good support. Kuehl coming inside, lovely run. Let's play together. Paduka at Leeds for years. Good understanding. Dream goal for Australia. What about that for a finish too by Marco Bresciano. Cool as you like. He scored some crackers for Australia in recent years. Is that the most vital one he'll score? Well, it's set up beautifully now. 
how long Australia have now not to get too excited because there's a real buzz around the stadium. Just need to maintain possession. Also want to keep going forward. And here's Montero with the free kick for Uruguay. Headed on by Morales. Here's Reguero. That was a foul by uh, Mark Viduca. That was a striker's challenge. It's Rakoba with the delivery again. He's gone for the near post. This was the target. Yeah, I like it. Chipperfield with this free kick. Great if Australia could get a second goal. Came off Edmonton's head. There's Kuehl. Polina. And there is the half-time whistle. A very eventful first half. And it's the Australian fans who are on their feet at the break. Jason Kalina had a good chance for Australia early on. Navarro Rakoba really should have scored, but that man did. So a reminder of the scenario, Australia leading 1-0 on the night. It's one all over the two legs. So if it was to stay this way, then we would have extra time. And conceivably penalties. Here is Kuehl, trying to attack the Uruguayan fullback, and it's a free kick. The Socceroos drive home their advantage. Bresciano kills it in, oh, and Kale was free, still couldn't there. get on it, still in the box, over the top corner. Better free kick. A message at half-time to Bresciano, more of the same. But get your set pieces right. Koba's delivery, all free header, and over the top by Morales. You are joking. And the flag had gone up on the far side in any case, but... Well... <laughs> Please. Guys. Alina in a bit of space. And works it out to Chipperfield. Kuehl. Step over, and another. To the right foot. Oh, and a oh. shot by Tim Cahill. Just wide of the post, and it took a deflection too. And he's taken a hit on the ankle as well. It's always dangerous there. I, tell you what, I think it was Montero. He's always reading the play beautifully. As soon as he cut back, Montero's coming forward. He's got a foot in on Cahill's ankle. It's a different Harry Kuehl tonight. Loves that left side this week. Coach to take Australia to the World Cup, Rally Razic. Implored hitting to pull him on that side. So far it's worked. There's Everton on the other side. Back to Grella. Now Kuehl. Chipper feels up in support. Everton have made a good run. Brett Everton's ball in. Terra, with all his experience, just stuck out a right boot. Way into touch. Australia on top at the moment. Was on fire. We need to keep feeding in the ball. Kalina with a little dink in towards Viduka. Bresciano! Yes. Could have been. Maybe should have been. It was pretty high for Marco Bresciano. It was pretty high for Mark Viduka. What did we say about feeding in the ball? Hitting's message was don't bring him into play too deep. That's where he's traditionally played, Mark Viduka. He's a lone striker, but coming too deep. Under pressure, trying to hold the ball. Plenty to be positive about for Australia. Comfortable at the back at the moment. Lucas Neal and Tony Vidmark. Oh, excellent job. That goes central. Just bounced for Tim Cahill. He's in there trying to make a nuisance of himself. By Emerton. Australia, as they did for large swathes of Montevideo, controlling this. Here's Kuehl. Bounce work for his favour over the top by Montero, another Australian corner. Again, beautiful work, but it's Harry Kuehl who's making the runs. It's Tor Manning, the right fullback at the moment, coming deep, turning, using his body beautifully, turning players every time. Flipmar's done well. He sweeps it out to Chipperfield. 
concentration from here as the legs start to go. Cure. Meter or two of space. Bresciano is wide left. Okay. Cahill with a header. Just didn't quite get hold of it. Yeah. If you're going to have one player arriving in the box for a ball on his head. He's free too. Notwithstanding that it's a diving header. A man who lives and dies on his ability to head the ball with late runs into the box. He's probably the one. In the gap for uh, Montero. Now, Harry Kuhl in round the back. Kuhl shot. Yeah. Oh, Carini wasn't convincing. He's gotten away with it. It's a good snapshot on the right. Cristiano had made his way in. So had Viduka once he got the ball off his head. Difficult to score at the near post. Cristiano with the corner. Out swinger this time. Kale was up there. This has gone. It's better though. It's better though. This is where you need the crowd now, willing the guys on. You need 82,000 voices. In unison, getting them over the line. It's out to Kuehl. Chipperfield on the overlap. Kuehl uses him as a decoy. Come behind, and it will be a corner. Well, there was uh, one or two half-hearted appeals for a handball there, maybe not so half-hearted in terms of Harry Kuehl. Just the referee was on this side, though. Wouldn't have seen it. It was only down to the referee. It might have been unsighted. It was a beautiful run by Chipperfield, overlapping with Kuehl the space. Is this the moment for the Socceroos? Shade over five minutes to go. Bresciano's delivery. And when he comes, doesn't get there. Here's Scott Chipperfield, takes a touch. Just couldn't get the shot away. Still the danger not averted for Uruguay. Colina chips it in. Viduka's header. Cahill goes after it. Dead ball is the end result. Very good ball by Colina. Ball came out. Chipperfield controlled it. He should have taken a second touch as a strike. Like a jink past the players. Not much room in the box. Is there time left for one more Socceroos attack? Maybe now. 30 seconds left of the three minutes. Kuehl on the turn. Miscontrol. Neil goes route one, looking for the Duke. Carini claims. Get you one go. You have to close up shop now. Well, there it is. The final whistle. Australia have won on the night by a goal to nil, but it's all square on aggregate. So we're going to be in extra time, extra half hour, and then, if necessary, penalties. Here we go. First period of extra time. 15 minutes each way. No golden goal. Away goals would count double. Australia have dominated plenty of games in world football. Cocked a sucker punch. The difference is we've got the tactical plan. Make sure that doesn't happen tonight. This last 30 minutes, Simon, it's not about tactics, it's about belief. It's about belief in the shirt, belief in what you're trying to achieve. To me, it looks as though this bunch of players have got it. Salajeta, dip in the header, no power on it. Thank you very much, Sir Schwarzer. John Aloisi is going to come on any moment. Uh, he's been the hero of the night so far, Bresciano. And he has. He has indeed. He gives him a warm reception as he comes off the park. John Aloisi did the business for Australia and Germany earlier in the year. He'll be the hero tonight. Salajeta. Ankle tap by Neil. Free kicks taken quickly. Varela. Now, Varela. Oh, just flies past the post. That's the second time they've had easy strikes outside the box. Plenty of time in extra time. Oh, no. 
Need to make sure he the gate shut at the back. Here's his first touch. Fabian Astoyanov. He will just get everything in the box. Well behind Kuhl. And they will be getting as many balls in the box to those two big men as they possibly can the remainder of this match. Set piece for Australia to defend. Again, it was uh, Shema Rodriguez. Got a clean header in. Just couldn't keep it down. These are nervous moments for the Socceroos. Chipperfield's delivery. It's the right idea again. Cahill the target. Carini for the first time tonight. She has a very safe pair of hats. Ball too far. F boot curling in towards the keeper. Too much height. Too much height there for Grella. Now this is a real chance for Uruguay. Round the back of Lucas Neal. Into the near post. Beaten away by the Australian defence. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant oh, defending. Brilliant defending. Poor work from Grella. The ball was bouncing, came out, was sold far too high up the park. Left Emerton with two guys running at him. And that's a good delivery out to Kuehl. The Duker and Al we see up ahead. How much has Kuehl got left in the tank? Three blue shirts alongside him. And three was more than enough. His first time, and Kuehl's done ever so well. He has done. He has done. He's fighting Harry Kuehl. He's fighting. Teammates build on it. Here's Grella. Squares it for Emerton. Emerton thought about the shot. He did have a shot. Long way off target by Brett Emerton. First touch let him down. It's too close to his feet. He'll take two steps onto this. Look. He's only got half a step. Can't swing the leg. Thought, uh, I still remember watching in 93 against Canada. Save two to get us through to the Argentina playoff. He was only 21 at the time. So a lot of strength. Hold back in. Dewey back Australia to score from this free kick. Again, the crowd up. rises. Lanty up from the back. It's a deep one towards Aloisi. Get on the time. volley. Blocked by the Uruguayans again. And the whistle goes. The end of the first period of extra time. Chances have been pretty few and far between, certainly from inside the box. Can they find one chance and one goal in this final 15 minutes? If not, it'll be the shootout. <laughs> Offside flag up against John Aloisi. Need to keep bodies back. Uruguay have shown in this game. They're not too often going to break us down with their passing. They sling some balls in from wide areas. Need to be smart. John Aloisi peeled away off his marker, gives chase. Carini just there a fraction before him. Now Lucas Neal. Seek out Aloisi, didn't quite get there. And Australia winning all the 50 50 balls at the moment. Oh. Uruguay look a tired team. Vidmar handballed off the chest, that was one then. Towards Viduka. Oh, out came Carini. It's fallen for Skoko. Josip Skoko. Good lad. Oh, I thought that was the moment just for a second. It's good, it's very good. It's keeping the pressure on. It's a lot of high balls into the box. Viduka oh, has been majestic. He's won a lot. He's been a presence all night. Well, surely Australia can't blow it. Three and a half minutes left. Lucas Neal on Morales. Pablo Garcia's ball in. Lucas Neal. You've got to get to it. Morales. Oh, Morales! Metro too wide of the post. Oh dear. <laughs> That's just tight legs that. You can hardly stand the tension. This is where it's difficult. You get the ball out. As soon as it's dither back in, you've got to be close to people. Should have had someone near him. Pablo Garcia's ball in. 
Oh, and a real chance here for Australia. Oh, brilliant. Good, Good work for the big man. <laughs> Gee. Oh, I tell you what. Talk about heart attacks. It looks like the dreaded shootout. There it is. Penalty kicks will decide a place in World Cup 2006. Australia's destiny will be from 11 metres in the capable hands, we hope, of Mark Schwarzer. Well, it's Harry Kuehl who's going to go first for the Socceroos. If you thought the 90 minutes in extra time was drama, you won't see nothing yet, folks. Here we go. It's Harry Kuehl against Fabian Carini. First penalty, Australia. Beautiful. Goal. Beautifully put away by Harry Kuehl. Sheer class, Harry. Was it ever in any doubt? No. Not with the game he's had tonight. 1-0 for Australia in the penalty shootout. Now, next up is the man who scored the only goal in Montevideo. It's the left-footer, Dario Rodriguez. Rodriguez against Mark Schwarzer. Saved Great by save. Schwarzer! Great He's save. done it again! In the shootout, Mark Schwarzer is the hero for Australia. It's a massive save. It's huge. It is huge. He stood his ground beautifully. He didn't move early, he waited for the kick. You've done it once, son. You can do it again. Next up is Lucas Neal, who's had a great game. It's Neal. Oh, it's it's 2 0. Australia 2 0 up in the shootout. And Lucas Neal was the calmest man on the pitch there. Pressure, what pressure? Two steps, thank you very much. Pick the spot, knew where he was going, urging the crowd on Lucas. Oh, it's tense. It's Varela. Oh, it's just underneath Schwarzer. It's too good. Again, he held his ground, Schwarzer. He's reading them, he's not going early. It's worked once. Tony Vidmar. What a way to cap off a memorable career. Drawn 14 years experience as a pro. Surely he's never had a kick as important as this. Come on, Tony. It's Vidmar. Beautiful. It's beautifully put Good away. his son. 3-1, Australia in the shootout. And Outstanding. That's closer to the World Cup. Luciano finished the goal. He's been massive. Fabian Estoyanov against Mark Schwarzer. Here we go. Beautifully tucked away by Estoyanov. Yeah. 3-2. Must get this one. And as you open the door, possible 3-3, Mark Viduka. And rightly so. And he's played the captain's role, Mark Viduka. William Arnold can't look. Viduka. Oh, he's put it wide. Would you believe it? Mark Viduka, who was enormous in the first leg. People miss penalty kicks. Roberto Baggio missed. Michel Platini missed in a World Cup. Now up to Mark Schwarzer. This would be a great one to save. Schwarzer just uh, perhaps a little mind game with Salajeta. Asking whether the ball was on the spot. Here is Salajeta. Oh, Big great save. save again by it's Schwarzer. A huge save. Wonderful save. It's as big as we've ever seen under pressure. It's the sort of heart that you need to make World Cups. Mark Schwarzer, you are a champion. Now, that means that if John Aloisi can score this goal, Australia will be there. Are you sure? I'm trying to do my best. 4 2. He wins it for it. us. John. Here's Aloisi for a place in the you World win Cup. It for us. He yeah! scores! Australia have done it! John! Come on! John Aloisi, the Confederations Cup hero, has done Go it the boys. in the biggest game of all. Come on, Australia! Johnny Warren! At last! At long, at long last! 
the 24 days have passed since Australia ended its campaign in the 74 World Cup. And now, finally, belatedly, wonderfully and joyfully, Australia is back on the biggest stage. What a night!